All right, guys, welcome back to part two of the trailer build. Um, if you didn't see part one, uh, go ahead and watch that, and you'll see how I did the structure on this. This video is going to be all about finishing out the trailer and kind of the finer details of painting, uh, doing the making your own fender skins for the structure that we did in the last video, uh, the wiring, the lighting, all those, all that good stuff. So uh, here we'll go ahead and show you. All right, so what we got here is I've taken some cardboard and I'm creating a template because I'm going to be cutting this. There's an aluminum sheet behind that piece of cardboard. I'm going to be cutting these templates out of that aluminum sheet um, and then attaching it to these fender braces that are already all welded up. So I kind of wanted to get a template out of cardboard um, so I can kind of lay it out on the aluminum sheet, see the best place to cut it from, and to just kind of see what I'm getting into. But it should turn out pretty good. Alrighty, we got our aluminum pieces cut. Um, what I used to cut is this Milwaukee cordless, uh, just regular skill saw. Um, and actually, I found this on another YouTube video. Used a fine finish wood blade, 40 tooth. The higher, uh, higher tooth count that it is, uh, the better it's going to cut. Also, smaller diameter, more power it's going to have. So, I used that to cut the aluminum. Um, and it honestly it cut it just as good as it cut wood. I was very surprised just uh, wear safety glasses and Maybe even a little more than that because I put my welding hood on just because of how many shavings it was throwing as you can see It is just an in incredible amount that it produces, but uh Yeah, it worked great. So these are cut out um, This is the top fender liner. Obviously, I'm gonna have to bend these sides down um, so basically my next step is going to be figuring out where my bends are going to be and now I don't have a sheet metal break or anything um, So basically I'm going to mark where it's going to be um, Measure make a line on each side cut a straight line across uh, and Very 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 shallow groove to bend along um, and I'm going to clamp it to the fender and kind of take it by hand Maybe with a rubber mallet and kind of get it bent and uh, get it in shape Fender skins are all cut and bent. Um, I did exactly what I was explaining before, how I, on the back side of this, I took a shallow groove and then flipped it over, clamped it to this, and then pushed on this by hand, and it created a crease right where I wanted. Um, these are obviously just mocked up because I'm gonna have to pull them off to paint the frame. I also, bent some tie down points out of 3 inch steel rod um, just kind of cut them and bent them into a, a rough u shape and welded one at each corner just to have some options for tying stuff down obviously i might end up adding more tie down points at some point but i think four is going to be good especially with whatever i'm loading is, is going to be sandwiched in between these uh fender wells anyways so Shouldn't be too bad. Well, I had these fender skins on. I figured I'd go ahead and get my tail lights in there. Um, I'll link these in the description of where I got them. I actually got them off eBay. Um, all I had to do was mark and drill the four holes for this. And then on the back side, the wires are sticking through. I did a, uh, a rubber grommet, used a step bit, and drilled a three quarter inch hole. Um, I'm going to end up once I get on my other wiring, I'm gonna end up covering that with armadillo covering and it'll it'll be, yes, it's right behind the tire, but it's gonna be, you know, perfectly protected once I'm done with it. Um, this is just the mock-up, kind of knocking everything out um, besides painting. So uh, when it comes time, I just strip it down, paint it, and then just put it back together. So I got all this sanded down now pretty good, at least this top layer here. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and put this anti-rust primer on. Uh, it's gonna red oxide primer. It's gonna I think it's gonna brush on red. Obviously, the finished project will be, product will be black. Um, but I'm gonna mainly do just the very top surface because that's the one I have sanded good. Um, just the top and edges of the fenders, um, and then probably let that dry overnight. And tomorrow, I will flip it over and take care of the rest.
here it is all primed up um, this is gonna have to dry overnight uh, then tomorrow I can start putting the top coat on which is black not this awful awful color um, but between this primer and that black coating uh, there should be no worries about about rust on this or uh, this coating and it also should be real strong as far as uh, standing up to rock chips and uh, normal wear and tear um, it really brushes on nice and thick um, so I can imagine once I do two coats of black over top of this um, it's gonna be nice and protected What you just saw is I uh, just took a regular paintbrush. This is uh, the, gonna be the final color. Um, I just kinda cut in all the hard to reach places. Um, I brushed the primer on all by hand, but what I'm gonna try to do is roll this final coat on just so it gets a good, nice even coat. Um, it would probably go a little faster too. This paint is a little thicker than the uh, primer was, so I'm not sure how it's gonna roll just yet. Um, and I don't want it to go on so thick that it's dripping, you know, off drying <laughs> with the drips going upside down to the top uh, where you can see them. So I'm just going to try the roller out and kind of see where it gets me. We got it flipped back over. We got our two coats on the bottom side. Um, now what we got left is to finish coating everywhere you see that's orange. This coating has turned out real good, as you can see here it's a real kind of a slick uh thick durable feeling so uh i think it's gonna hold up really good so uh we'll go ahead and finish painting it final coat is on and dry uh it dried a little funny on me uh, I did two coats and then I did kind of a quick coat last night when I got home um, and it's not as smooth in some places so you can see it's kind of rough there um, once I get my hitch in I got to paint that so I may go back over what I what's exposed again uh, just because it's on top once I get all this other stuff assembled just to kind of clean it up a little bit but uh, yeah now it's time for reassembly we get the axles on um, get the wheels on I'm gonna start the trailer wiring as far as the wiring goes, this is pretty much what we got. Um, got this off Amazon, I'll link it. Uh, this is from Harbor Freight. These are some clamps that are gonna hold it against the frame. Some grommets, a uh, bunch of heat shrink. Got these little LED marker lights for the front. I got those off Amazon, eBay, one of the two. I'll link it. Uh, and then these license plate lights. Uh, just gonna put one on one of the fenders for the license plate. Uh, some silicone just to kind of seal up with the grommets got some of the heat shrink butt connectors a um, bunch of armadillo and then I got some other braided stuff I've used for other projects uh, and then picked up some more step bits from Harbor Freight just because they're so cheap but uh, yeah that's pretty much all all for the trailer wiring Getting started on the wiring here. Uh, I took some heat shrink and this other braided like cable protectant and made my initial lead all protected because that'll end up what's plugging into the truck. It may not be exactly that long once I pull some slack through. Um, what I did was feed each wire I needed down this main tube because it's one solid piece. Drilled some exit holes to uh, end up branching out to where I need the lights. These are for my marker lights, and all you need is your one power um, to go to each, and then you ground it to the chassis. Yellow is going to be left turn and brake. So I got that coming out here. Green is right turn and brake, and then brown is marker or running lights like in for the rear actually. Um, so you only have two brown running light wires. So what I did is one of the wires runs all the way back to here. I got it coming out this way 
Um, and then my excess that I don't need, I just kind of snipped, you know, because it's plenty long to go there. Um, now that is actually going to connect to that wire that runs there. So it'll be a, a kind of a, a Y intersection. It'll have the one wire and then two split off and one will go and power this light, one will go and power this light. And then I've done the exact same thing here. Um, there's another brown running light power that's gonna come to here. Um, I have another wire, which I will make a join to three wires and then that way it'll branch off and split. Um, and that's how I'm powering all the lights. As far as the taillight wiring goes, we got our ground, brake, and turn. Um, so yellow is going to go to one, and then our brown is going to go to one for tail, and then ground to the trailer. Uh, and then also, we need a ground for our license plate light and our power, which that's going to tie into the taillight circuit. So these are where our powers for our marker lights join. Um, as I was saying, so this is the wire that comes from your connector from the truck. Um, and then each of these wires split out to your marker lights and those are your powers. Um, I used a weatherproof butt connector, uh, which they crimp on. And then you take a lighter or heat gun or something like that to heat shrink it. And plus, and then this is going to be inside this tube. So it's going to be safe from the weather anyways. Uh, and then I'll have little rubber grommets here that let the wires pass through without chafing on the metal. So we got one side of these marker lights all wired up. Um, as you can see it comes out, got a rubber grommet, some heat shrink, uh, some of this braided like a uh, wire protector basically. Um, that runs across there, got these connections and actually this is the harness off of our marker lights which are flush mount. That goes through there, and obviously that needs to be grounded, so went ahead and grounded it right where our wire holders are, so that worked out real good. Um, next we're going to go ahead and do this side, as you can see, that's what it looked like beforehand, and then we can move on to the back. Okay, so we got all of our wiring routed to where our tear lights are going to be on both sides uh, we got the front done which I showed you that that one side before and I went ahead and tested those lights and made sure they work um, next we're gonna have to get these fender skins attached to the braces um, so then I can go ahead and wire that up what I'm gonna be using is this 3m uh, VHB tape um, if you watch some YouTube videos on this stuff, it's like a double sided tape and it is crazy strong. I would have never, never thought I'd be using something like this to attach these uh, fenders to that. But, and also, the, another good reason for doing this is aluminum and steel, when they're in close contact, it can, it can cause like a galvanizing corrosion. Um, so between the paint, paint layers, and also this, that'll avoid happening, or we can avoid that from happening. So, uh, first I'm going to go ahead and stick it on the fender here and I guess I'm gonna flip it over and just peel this side first maybe stick it and then see if I can get a pair of pliers or something like that and kind of squeeze out the other side and then press it flat on there because I think if it was all sticky at once I would <laughs> I'd end up putting it not straight or something so we'll go ahead and give that a shot Fenders are on, as you saw, stuck it with that VHB tape, uh, and that stuff is real sticky. It was kind of hard to get it, um, to place it down on and kind of keep it straight and everything like that. It's definitely not 100% perfect, but uh, it's good. I had this overhang here because I'm going to have another plate that's going to go on there after I'm done with the wiring. But yeah, it's awesome to get those on there for good. And that's the... Uh, License plate light. I don't remember if I showed you guys that or not. Uh, I'm gonna mount the license plate right there. So should work out pretty, pretty nicely. Here's the fender wells all complete. See this other plate that I added here. Um, all the wiring's done. All the lights work. I hooked it up to a battery in here and tested every light. Um, pretty much the only thing we're waiting on now. I uh, tonight I actually. A safety chain holder welded that on and coated this 
Uh, I'm still waiting on a lock and roll hitch to come in so I can drill some holes here is why I have it painted. Hopefully it'll be here this week. Um, and then then I can uh, hook it up to the truck, uh, get it inspected by the state troopers so I can bring the paperwork to DMV and get, a, get it tagged. It's, uh, it's getting there. As far as the floor goes, um, I really wasn't going to do one. I was just going to do the ramp and then the wheel chalk for the motorcycle up here. Um, but the more I'm thinking about it, uh, I think I'm going to do some sort of floor. Haven't quite figured it out yet. It's either going to be a sheet of aluminum or it's going to be some, uh, like a high quality plywood of some sort, may even stain it to make it look a little better. Um, I just figure it's a high traffic area. Um, plywood be easy to replace. And, you know, it's kind of like the aluminum would be hot in the summertime. You couldn't really sit on it or anything like that. These are already probably going to be hot enough in the sun. Um, and then plus that would just be kind of a whole lot of silver. So I'm kind of leaning more towards the wood. Um, I guess we'll just have to see. Uh, I'm more worried about getting it ready and inspected and that paper signed off so I can get it street legal. Um, and then I'll worry about the, the rest of the stuff. So we finally got our lock and roll hitch in. Um, for anybody who doesn't know what they are, as you can see, this pivots this way. And then they hook up. And then you run a pin through here just to keep it keep it shut. And then right here also pivots. It's a, yeah, it's a little tight. But when it's behind the truck, so when you're off-road, the trailer can articulate this way and this way with no limits. Um, so you're not going to worry about the ball popping off or anything like that. Um, also, once this is pinned, it's a very quiet and uh, solid connection to your trailer. Um, so this is, uh, is going to go obviously plug into the truck. I haven't done the ground wire yet because I want to mock it up with the truck. Um, I'm just going to ground it somewhere right here, zip tied to that. But uh, that's kind of the final piece until I, uh, until I get the floor. I was waiting on this for about a month. So happy it's here. Uh, yeah. Here it is all hooked up. We got our uh, lock and roll hitch on. Went ahead and finished grounding that trailer wiring harness. Um, got our Kurt safety cables hooked to the bumper. Got our DMV uh, VIN plate installed because tomorrow I actually am going to get a state trooper to come check it out, make sure all the lights work. Um, and it's up to their standards and then they have to sign a piece of paper and then this Saturday I can take that to DMV and get a tag for it so I come out right there and then we're all street legal and then it's figuring out what kind of floor I want um, and after that I just put the wheel track on and got my uh, my bike carrier all right, so I got the state trooper to come look at the trailer. He signed off on the papers with the DMV, got my plates, brought them back, put them on the trailer, um, actually finished out the floor, and I just got back from my first trip with the trailer, and it did awesome, and uh, I'm really excited to show it to you guys. So uh, here it is. Alright, so what you saw there was a little uh, little filming I did on our way to our campsite this weekend. Um, just got back and you can see it's all, all nice and dirty and dusty. It was, uh, it was real dusty this weekend. But So what I did for the floor, um, I actually took a piece of plywood and then I took some Raptor liner and you can roll it on. Raptor liner is the same stuff I've done my bumper in. Um, and I rolled that coating on there and I chose wood 
So it's easy to replace, it's easy to mount stuff to. Um, and how I mounted it is I just took some U-bolts right under the frame there. And these look like they're hanging low, but that crossbar, it I mean, you can cut them off if you want, but it'll be just fine just like this. Um, I went ahead and took my ramp and just did some holes with some wing nuts and washers and bolts. Um, I got the Oz tent here. Um, it's perfect. I can set that up next to the bike. The bike's nice and solid. The uh, Harbor Freight wheel chalk that I chose to mount the bike to um, was a great choice. It's For the money, it's kind of hard to beat. Um, all these tie down points worked out great. One thing I will say that I was super impressed with was this timber and uh, suspension. Um, you could see in that little video I did how it just absorbs the bumps and it really keeps your load from getting all the shock that you can get from uh, certain roads. That was just a washboard on a gravel road, but even off road, I mean, it, even the suspension has some has some travel to it. So it's uh, it's a lot nicer for whatever you're carrying, especially when it's something like this that's an upright motorcycle that you got to keep upright. Um, so very happy I went with that. Some people might be wondering about the tongue length. Um, Obviously it makes the trailer tow better, uh, backup easier, but the biggest thing for me was I wanted that my swing out to be able to lock open and without disconnecting the trailer or unloading the bike or any of that nonsense. So I can still get some of my stuff in the back when I'm at camp, don't have to mess with the trailer until I need to. And actually if I pull in and turn right, so then the tongue would be out this way, uh, kind of catty corner then this isn't even the way of me you know being at the back of my truck cooking and doing whatever so i don't even have to unhook the trailer when i get to camp um, and it's light enough that me and a buddy can just pick it up and move it over that way if you know if you can't pull in that way but yeah i mean it it turned out real good of course not everybody is going to be hauling a bike with their trailer you may be using this to build one for a roof rack for a rooftop tent uh, which at this point you could attach one to the floor or you could have welded one mounts in so you could have some uprights uh, i think there's even some companies that sell racks that you can you could bolt right to this platform right here um, and you could add walls and do whatever but i mean the main thing is i'm sure that most of you guys want it is kind of how to build the base of it the chassis of it and suspension and and all that stuff so i really hope this video helped you out in that aspect um, and I really appreciate everybody who's watching uh, and all the people that were commenting on part one saying they're ready for part two. Um, really gave me some motivation to kind of film and I really was waiting for this trip uh, just because I wanted to kind of get some good videos of it in action, not just sitting in my garage or in my driveway, kind of showing you how, uh, how it actually worked. Um, and I'd really appreciate if you could subscribe to the channel. We're almost to a thousand subscribers. I think we're at like 860 or something right now. I don't know, but almost 2,000. Uh, really excited about that. And uh, I really appreciate if you guys share the video and kind of help spread the word. Uh, if there's anything that you feel like I didn't cover well enough or anything you have questions on, uh, feel free to DM me on Instagram or message me on Facebook or uh, comment on here or anything of that nature. And I will get back to you as soon as I can. Um, and I really appreciate you guys, really appreciate you guys watching. Uh, thanks again.